tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. For me personally, the nice thing about these tutorials is that they are short and they don't cover everything. How could they cover everything uh, concerning a computer software with over a thousand commands? Uh, so we only deal with little things and uh, little tasks. And our task today is how can we make him jump higher? If you have a look at how he or she accelerates, you see that he or she cannot really jump much higher, but maybe a little bit. When you have a, um, a platform in, in this, at this level, you cannot achieve that height with this jump. But a little bit higher is possible, and I want to show you how to achieve this. So I create a new scene. And I go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Preferences. Because we're dealing with character animation, we need to go to the settings. We don't need to, but it's much more comfy to do that. Go to Settings and change the working units from centimeters to meters. And then Save. The advantage is that we have a grid which is in dimensions of meters. This is a meter rather than centimeters, so when we import a character now, uh, uh, the character arrives in a, uh, in a well, uh, in natural dimensions. Windows General Editors Content Browser. This is where the prefab objects are. When you're under Animation here, open the Animation tab, go to Motion Capture, and under FBX you find these files here. And our jumping on person is that one. Maybe it's a woman, I don't know. I double click it. It lands in the scene and you see the dimensions are all right. The creature, the character is about two meters high or a little bit less, of course. Um, so this is just perfect. Now, uh, just for orientation, I want to create that little object here. And I think we can move it a little bit further back. And in order to see it pretty precisely, we need to slow motion this thing here. So you see it's slightly too high. And here I think it's too dangerous, too close. Maybe we move it just a little bit over here so the foot is not getting hurt when the foot moves up. And the second foot follows. Yeah, we need to move it even further back maybe just a little bit because when we walk up a high step we take care that we don't hurt our toes so that's good now okay um, we want to not exaggerate it too much but let's try this for example this height I undo this and I duplicate the platform and I move it like uh, to a height like this so in the ordinary view here uh, I can hide now the previous one and of course this doesn't work because the platform is too high now so how can we make him or her jump a little bit higher I think it's uh, it's about 20 centimeters. There are several ways to achieve this and one way which is really elegant is using the time editor. Uh, why time editor? Because uh, if you open this with a shift key you see lots and lots of um, joints and each of these joints has rotational uh, keyframes at every frame. So at frame 56 for all these objects here in three dimensions of rotation x y and z and the next frame 57 
same thing again. So if you choose to change the rotation of the of the whole person so that when he or she stretches like this this motion here she still stretches and is not bent because we change the rotation of the knee only in order to get uh, her on uh, properly placed on that platform you run into deep problems the um, window for this is the graph editor it's this window and it's uh, I think it's beautifully laid out but I mean it's too complex to handle in this case because every frame has a keyframe for all the dimensions here so let's forget about this approach and uh, rather go to the time editor uh, the time editor wants us to select the reference which is our basic skeleton input and the we find the time editor under the animation editors it's right below the graph editor I mean the graph editor is an excellent tool but not in cases of motion capture data with every key frame a keyframe so here is the time editor let's open this this window has two options three options basically um, import content from external files add selected content from the scene and drag and drop it into the editor we probably could drag and drop this into the editor as well but we just add selected content this is our jump on reference to the scene now the time editor is similar to a video editing editing tool and uh, it shows us the animation right here and we go to the frame where the character plants her right foot on the step which is about here frame 45 so we select this animation block here and we ch go to this icon here this icon splits our animation into two parts it's all non-destructive so you can do anything you like here and always uh, nothing um, is being destroyed uh, now select this one because here we want to do something and now you can go to this icon uh, I think it's under relocate as well create a relocator let's create a relocator now I can minimize this window the relocator sits here let me close this here's the relocator in the outliner and you see when we move the relocator it moves our character so all we want to achieve now is to raise our character to the new level which is right about here now when we reopen the time editor uh, we, s we see this you see that the foot penetrates the ground and then jumps up so let's go back here and go back here and what's happening now it's much better what we can do in the time editor is overlap these two lines so it's getting better And now I think it's okay so this is just a brief demonstration of using the time editor it's a non destructive process and with a relocator we can easily relocate our character if you want him to jump or her to jump much higher we need a different motion capture animation And with this, I leave you alone now. Enjoy character animation with the time editor. Bye-bye.